Yeah. So, hi everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is George Todorovic. This is Nikola Pritza. Uh, we are coming from LTRK company from Serbia. So, we have been working as a team on various projects uh, in field of compilers, debuggers, profilers, and so on. We are going to be talking today how far can we go with debug info in optimized code in LVM, especially with an improvement uh, by looking at function parameters, entry values at call point, at call side point. So since we know that uh, debugging optimized code is very challenging in these days, we work very hard in order to improve that. So yeah. So RTRK is a software company uh, specialized in uh, uh, system software and embedded systems. So as I said, uh, we are part of the group uh, working on compilers and uh, tools from open source area such as GCC, Binutils, LVM, LuaJIT, and so on. So the group has been working on LVM since 2010, and we are working on debug-related uh, issues in LVM for, for the last two years. So, yeah. Here are points we want to talk about today. Uh, firstly, we will start with some general story about debugging software release products. So also we'll describe a technique uh, that can be used uh, within debugger uh, for finding some actual values of function parameters even they are described as optimized out. So after that we will point to some parts of our implementation in LVM we took to support this feature. And at the end, we'll show you some numbers that actually confirm that we are improving something in debug location coverage. So yeah, let's start. So software release products are compiled with uh, some kind of uh, optimizations. So <laughs> for compilers like uh, GCC and LVM Clang, it is usually O2 or O3 level. So such a product might produce a core dump file on an embedded system and it could be starting point of our uh, analysis of the problem. So first thing we, we usually do after loading a core file into a debugger on our local machines is uh, analysis of the call trace from the crash. So uh, to the optimization pipeline, uh, we lose a lot of debug information. So uh, in those call traces, we see a lot of uh, optimized out parameters values. So actually, we also notice in those debug sessions that uh, even if a variable is alive at some point, it could be uh, clobbered even earlier and reported as optimized out. So yeah. So uh, developers with more experience with debuggers are aware uh, that some of those values uh, could be found at parents frame or, or frame above. So yeah, looking at this example here, we see that parameter x is reported as optimized out. But if we <laughs> jump into frame 2, we are able to print the actual value at call site point. So, yeah. If we can do that, why not optimize all this process within debugger? But we, in order to do that, we need additional information uh, by compiler side. So, in this example here, we see all that process optimized on both sides, debugger and compiler. And we also see these entry values uh, printed out. So actually, those uh, optimized out values turned into actual values. So yeah, a uh, little bit of motivation here to listen to the rest of the presentation carefully. By implementing this feature in, in 
LVM clang, we noticed that uh, the number of fully covered uh, function parameters uh, increased even up to 15%, which is a very good number. So, yeah. Uh, there are several uh, dwarf symbols introduced in order to support the feature. So, does everyone know dwarf? I hope no, yeah. Uh, for those who are not familiar, uh, actually dwarf is uh, standard for describing debug information on Unix-like operating systems. So compilers generate that, so debuggers consume it. So yeah. Uh, to mention that it was initially uh, introduced by Jakub Elenek, and it was implemented in GCC and uh, GDB since 2011. So basically, those two tags uh, represent call site and call site parameters. So those attributes describe them. S so there is also a uh, dwarf operand that can be used within dwarf expression for describing actual value for, for, for uh, parameters. So let's jump into real <coughs> example. So we see here a real uh, call site printed into debug info section. So it says that uh, it lives at <coughs> this address in memory, this called PC. Actually, it is address of a call instruction in memory. This call origin actually uh, represents a reference uh, to a debug information about called function. This call site parameter is a child of this particular call site. And it says that it lives at register 5. And at call point, it had uh, value 7. So yeah, that's it. It's another example. So if the parameter uh, uh, has <coughs> untouched, uh, un unchanged value through the course of the function, we can use uh, this uh, op entry value, actually entry value, for describing uh, actual value uh, for that parameter at the places uh, where it uh, has no location information at all. So uh, let's imagine that a parameter uh, has its scope for, from address x to address z. But from x to epsilon address, it has uh, location information. But for, for the rest of its scope, we generate uh, additional op entry value for describing the rest of the scope. So, yeah. So, so just to Nicola will continue with implementation details. So, hello everyone. Uh, I will present you entities that we introduce on IR and machine IR level in order to follow information about call site to the compilation process. I will also introduce you with some of the concerns that we have about our certain parts of implementation. So uh, how many of you is familiar with debug info metadata in LLVM? So basically, uh, I will explain it briefly. Uh, basically, it is inspired by dwarf tags, and uh, it is used to represent source entities such as file, functions, lines, lines, uh, lexical blocks, variables, etc. <coughs> so uh, since debug info metadata is inspired by Dwarf, and we have that resemblance, and uh, George just showed uh, that uh, call site information in Dwarf is represented by tags, tag call site, and tag call site parameter, we decided to introduce uh, DI call site and DI call site param metadata. So uh, here we can see for call instruction that it has attached metadata node call site, which reference to call site metadata. And we can see that call site has following arguments such as scope, file, it has reference to array of DI call site param. Uh, it, it has line and it has reference to called subprogram. 
and uh, for uh, the ICO site param, uh, it has argument number, it has reference to uh, variable metadata, and it has an expression over that variable. Now, if a called argument is a constant, here, here we would have only uh, the I expression, which represent a constant. So, uh, this DI call site param is used uh, as a backup location uh, for, for, uh, for catching this parameter at entry. Uh, we will, I will show primary location later. And uh, with, uh, this, uh, with this metadata, we actually emulate jumping back into functions frame and uh, printing, printing cer certain expression. Uh, we also need to mention that uh, in order to use this new value, entry value, for representing other variables, especially parameter va variables, we need to verify that uh, that parameter has never been modified through the course of the function. So uh, in order to check this, we used SEMA constant check, and the, we wrote, wrote that information inside vari parameter variable uh, debug metadata. So uh, this approach has certain benefits, and it has certain limitations. And regarding benefits, we, uh, it resembles to dwarf tag, tag and uh, it follows that idea. Also, we have additional backup for representing, uh, of course, site parameter once primary location is lost. And uh, also, we are able to produce uh, tag call site parameter that ha can have uh, DVOP entry value in, it, in, in itself. And that means that we can uh, look two or more frames up in search for some entry value. And uh, regarding uh, limitations, uh, there is no uh, support for representing uh, expression between multiple variables. For, to do so, we would probably need new kind of uh, debug metadata. Also, uh, since uh, we are emulating jumping back and printing variable location, uh, we are able to do so because there is a system for tracking variables location in LLVM but there is no support for tracking functions return value location. And that is the reason that uh, we can represent uh, uh, arguments that are functions, fu function calls. Also, uh, there is no easy way to represent address of variable. Uh, it is hard to distinguish uh, in debug metadata between variables address and variables value. Uh, it is not impossible, but it is pretty complicated. Also, uh, we need, in order to provide reference in uh, DI call site parameter to uh, DI variable, variables metadata, we needed to change a uh, pretty standard and stable interface of DI builder, uh, DI builder uh, interface. And uh, we uh, previously, uh, creation and preservation of variables metadata uh, was done in one function call, but we needed to separate it, separate this. Next pass th that I'm going to talk about is instruction selection pass. Now, it is important to mention this pass since this is the place of our implementation that could possibly, possibly be improved. So, <coughs> we implemented a general algorithm that should work for various architectures. Uh, job of this algorithm is to recognize instructions, copy instructions that forward that forward uh, function arguments to the following function call. So we can see, for example, this pseudo copy instruction, pseudo instructions like, like this. Uh, so a uh, process of this algorithm starts after call lowering, target call lowering, uh, whose re result is target <coughs> call lowering info object. And this object in itself contains a sequence of selection DAG nodes that represent call sequence. So we iterate through this sequence and we uh, search for copy to reg uh, selection DAG nodes. These nodes should later be mapped to copy, to copy instructions. And uh, then we try to match copied value with one of the, uh, with one of the functions input argument. Uh, such verification is required because uh, we, we could have additional copy instructions inside uh, this calling sequence. 
uh, for example, for variadic functions, additional register uh, copy instruction is required. And some of the uh, function calling ABIs might load additional, uh, additional uh, value that is not uh, function argument. Uh, this could be uh, this algorithm could be lowered to target specific level, more precisely to the level of where call sequence is being generated. So uh, once we have matched these nodes, we just preserve them in uh, instruction selection representation of call site, and later we emit them as uh, DBG call site and DBG call site pair pseudo instructions. So our uh, backup implementation pretty much relies on uh, how dbg value pseudo instruction is handled this pseudo instruction is used to track uh, variables location in registers uh, virtual or physical stack locations or some address uh, or in some addresses so uh, here you can see this uh, dbg uh, call site and dbg call site param instructions. Uh, for dbg call site, uh, first operand is a boolean value whether uh, reference call, site, call is stale or not. And the uh, second argument is provided uh, if call is indirect call. And then uh, it is that calls register location. And last argument is reference to a DI call site. Now, uh, this could be implemented uh, differently, but we choose to keep all information about call site at one place. Now, uh, we can see here uh, the dbg call site param instructions are attached as a bundle to dbg call site. And the uh, first argument of dbg call site param is uh, a register that forwards argument to the following, f following function uh, call. Second is reference to di call site param. And the last arguments represent the uh, location that is loaded into parameter forwarding register. Now I will just uh, I will mention that uh, this uh, machine uh, machine IR is uh, produced with LLVM 4.0, and uh, I have just stripped some of the instructions uh, in order to uh, code to be more more clear. And uh, here we can uh, follow uh, here we can follow behavior of uh, variable C, and we can see that it is indeed uh, forwarded as the first argument of function foo. So first value its its first value is value four. After this function call, uh, it is returned as eax and moved to ebx register, and later it is forwarded uh, as a function call argument through edi. <laughs> So uh, in order to uh, handle this instruction in backend, we needed modification in the prologue, epilog, in setter pass, register allocation, split kit, virtual register, writer, and most important for us in light debug values pass. Now, a job of this pass is to broadcast, broadcast dbg value uh, pseudo instructions into successive blocks where preserved location is not clobbered where it, that location is valid. So as a natural, uh, it should emit replacement for parameters, for parameters, uh, for, for dbg values that represent parameters. And once these locations are clobbered, we should emit this uh, dbg value with new expression, with this new expression, dvop entry value. Also, this pass knows uh, for each basic block range which variables uh, are live at that point. So as a, also, uh, we uh, adjust dbg call site param instructions here. And uh, by adjusting, we mean that we delete these instructions that are not valid. Uh, instructions that are not valid are ones that do not have primary location nor uh, backup location. By backup location, we mean uh, invalid backup location are ones that reference variables that are not uh, seen at that point of block. Also, uh, regarding uh, producing uh, this, uh, printing this location in uh, object file, it is done in dwarf debug pass, and it, uh, it, is, it, it is 
handle sim similarly as for dbg value instruction so there is nothing special to say here it is uh, uh, it relies pretty much on similar structures as dbg value so uh, georgia will now present you some measurements that we have so yeah uh, we'll show you some numbers that actually confirm our improvement. So in order to do that, uh, we used a logstat tool from Elf Utils package. It actually looks for a scope of a variable and calculates a debug location coverage we need. So uh, for testing purpose, we uh, for these slides, we used GDB 7.11 and SPEC 2006 benchmark. So also uh, we noticed uh, increment in debug location coverage. Also we didn't touch code generation, which is very important. There is no change in text BSS or data sections. There is only change in dot debug sections as expected so yeah and just to mention that uh, for o2 and o3 level uh, we noticed <coughs> very similar results so yeah first example is gdb 7.11 so we built uh, the latest release version of that <coughs> so we noticed over there the increment of uh, fully covered function parameters uh, for about 15%, uh, which is about 17,000 more debug variables with fully debug location coverage, which is a very good number, yeah. So average coverage per variable is increased for about 10%. So there is no change in code generation. There is only change in dot debug sections. and in this case, we noticed build time increase for about 2%, so yeah. Another example, yeah, we built SPEC 2006 benchmark. It is a huge project uh, designed <coughs> uh, to stress uh, <coughs> processor, CPU, compiler, memory subsystem, and so on. It is pretty standard test suit so over there we <coughs> notice the increment of fully covered function parameters for about eight percent which is about twelve thousand more debug variables with, with fully coverage so in this case we noticed uh, the increment of average coverage per variable for about four percent so there is no change in code generation uh, the change as expected is only in dot debug sections and build time in this uh, case uh, increased for about 1%. So, yeah, those uh, improvement in debug location coverage is yeah, most important. Yeah. So, uh, I will just wrap up this presentation. So after we finished this uh, implementation, we identified two main spots in our implementation that require further discussion. So there is a question about usefulness of the I call site param, and uh, there is a question uh, whether algorithm for in a s instruction selection phase should be lowered to a target specific level, uh, but that requires target specific knowledge. And uh, what does our implementation provide? It provides, uh, most importantly, correct debug data. We try to be strict as much as we could in order to achieve this. Also, our measurements showed, showed that we didn't touch code generation process. And this is important because uh, our implementation uh, <coughs> takes part through the whole compilation uh, pipeline. So. 
uh, it is also important to mention that uh, it provides infrastructure for uh, for collecting information about coal sites. Uh, we believe that we have touched all necessary passes and that uh, cur current flow is sufficient, but it certainly needs some improvements. It, it gives us desired results. It gives us uh, improvement in uh, parameter location coverage and uh, it uh, it it provides us new uh, fun functionality in debugger. Uh, it provides us en function entry values. Uh, and these entry values uh, in debugger uh, clearly provide us better user debugging experience in programs produced with LLVM. So and before we finish, we would like to mention that we have implemented this feature in collaboration with Cisco, with Cisco uh, especially with this with uh, Anand Sovda and Ivan Baya. So thank you for listening and thank, thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was curious in the slide where you showed the, um, the measurements. So yep. you show dash G dash F emit param entry values. Yeah. Uh, is that dash F flag added as into the dash G groups or any of the G level groups, or is it something I explicitly need to enable? Actually, firstly, just to mention that we, uh, yeah, uh, so the question was, uh, does we include this F emit uh, param uh, option into dash G uh, default options? So actually, uh, for, for now, no. Why? Uh, we initially implemented this for an internal uh, version of uh, LVM 4.0 compiler, and we tested this uh, within uh, Cisco on large projects. But uh, and also we introduced a new option in order to make all of those testing and make sure that we didn't clobber anything, especially code generation. And uh, as soon as we make sure that everything goes well. We will include this in uh, default minus G. And actually, just to mention that we are in the process of uh, backporting this onto LVM Trank, latest version. Actually, we backported it. So we are finishing uh, testing phase. And as soon as we uh, are done with that, we will post those patches onto LVM. So, awesome. yeah. Anything we can do to yeah. debug info is a major, major help. Yeah, thank you. It, it, it's supposed to be this month, so yeah, we cool. expect this. So, I know you had some target-specific uh, code in there. Is it, is it your intention that you target to implement this yourself, or are you going to implement this for all backends? So uh, the question is, uh, where is the target-specific uh, implementation? Uh, target specific implementation part is in uh, instruction selection, and it, it is a part uh, for uh, selection DAG nodes generation. Uh, it concerns about how some targets generate this call sequence. Uh, and uh, we, we, we notice that uh, there are some issues for matching those, uh, those selection DAG nodes. Because you, you could, for example, you could have some node and you could have node value and you could have that node, node value wrapped up with some, uh, some extension, for example, uh, zero extension or sign extension. And you can't uh, match these two nodes. You just, you just need explicitly to match uh, the selection deck node, which do, does not have this extension. Also, uh, also one, uh, sorry. Also, there is, uh, we also implemented uh, some salvaging function uh, that preserves some uh, location where we, for, for example, uh, when we lose track of uh, primary location uh, in virtual <coughs> registry writer, we go back up to in-stream to search for instruction that loads that parameter. Uh, and we try to interpret that instruction. We implemented the salvaging for uh, x86 LIA instruction. For example, but when in the upstreaming process, are you going to implement that for all targets, or is it sort of selectively people have to turn this on and they'll have to make sure the back end supports it? Uh, 
Oh, sorry, could you repeat yeah, the question? So, so when in the process of upstreaming, as it stands now, it sounds like some parts will only work on x86. So you, uh, you, I'm just thinking, are you going to try and approach the other uh, backend implementers to get them to implement it, or are you going to implement it yourself? No, no uh, this, 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 yeah. So, so the, uh, the question is uh, whether this only works for 886 architecture. Uh, we just tested it for x86 architecture. We we tested this uh, feature only to build uh, only to build uh, complex software for various architectures such as MIPS and ARM. But we didn't go into deep details to see uh, where we lose information. So, you, you have the measurements comparing the coverage that you should utilize in the same software. Uh, actually, yeah, when we started looking at this feature. And yeah, we 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 did yeah we had you know seen those measurements. We calculated those numbers also with GCC, but comparing GCC and LVM uh, doesn't make sense because the code code is different, generated code is different. But yeah, honestly, LVM is still behind GCC in in debug location coverage because yeah this. Uh, feature is uh, pretty standard over there since 2011 yeah, and it was improved in, in stages so yeah if your uh, question was <laughs> does GCC has better the debug location coverage yeah it still it has but LVM with this uh, will have uh, certainly better location coverage yeah and we are running to, to even you know be uh, at least like uh, GCC, you know. <coughs> yeah, yeah. I had a related so question to that. So, 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 yep. Okay, so the, well, first of all, thank you very much. This is really useful work because it's an area where LLVM debug for optimized code in LLVM is behind GCC and has been improved. Have you <coughs> looked at the impact of this actually on the GDP? Uh, so, uh, so the question was uh, whether we looked uh, at GDB for some uh, some uh, corner test cases. Uh, thank you, thank you for that question. We didn't, and uh, we will gladly look at. We will in investigate that. Thank you. So, just to mention here that uh, LDB uh, doesn't support. Uh, uh, reading of uh, entry values. I think that for now it will be just ignored. So, but within GDB, we tried to debug user experience even with the uh, uh, binaries compiled with LVM with this version, and yeah, it works for for bunch of cases. So, thank you for the question. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, the question was uh, if uh, this functionality is uh, available only for Dwarf 5. Actually, uh, initially, it was introduced as a GNU extension and used in GCC like that. But uh, since uh, Dwarf 5 released, it is uh, in this part of the standard. So for now, uh, yeah, for, for, for this purpose, we internally generated GNU extensions as well, but yeah, uh, it's supposed to be uh, both of that. GNU and. Sure, yeah, yeah. We should support uh, GNU as well as uh, Dwarf 5 symbols. So, yeah, thank you for the question. So, on these metrics, um, I'm not entirely sure exactly what the metric average coverage per variable really means, but I'm assuming that it's impossible to get 100% because some variables will be completely eliminated. There's no way to, yeah. even if you were perfect, to find it. Do you know what the theoretical upper maximum number would be that you could strike for? Uh, so uh, the question is, uh, <coughs> so the question is, uh, 
uh, what is the theoretical maximum for varage uh, uh, coverage uh, percentage? Uh, we use this uh, tool, logstat. Now, uh, it, it is not able to uh, measure it variable visibility uh, from where it is defined to last use of that variable. It is measure. It it, it can only measure uh, its uh, coverage only to that lexical block where it is defined. Mm -hmm. So uh, th th these numbers just show us uh, how how much we did improve. Uh, show that we just improve something, and we similar. Uh, this tool was also used by Jelinek. Uh, in his uh, paper to show up this uh, improvement. Yeah, actually it would be perfect if uh, we have uh, an tool, a tool that actually looks for a life of a variable, but yeah, we don't have that. We use just uh, this one as a reference to measure improvement, yeah. Yeah, yeah but if someone knows for some tool for that looks for a variable's life, yeah. Please be free to, to advise us. There are no more questions. Then we can thank the speakers. Thank you. Thank you.